So in today's notes, if you take a look at the headings, we're going to do other transformations online. So last class, we looked at the dilation. So number one, we're going to reflect. Number two, we're going to translate. And number three, we're going to rotate. Then if you flip to the back, we're going to take a look at a sequence of transformations. So that involves more than one. Okay, one is a congruence transformation, and the other is similarity, and then last, a composition. <coughs> okay, so starting with the transformations of lines, okay, as I stated, this is a typo in each one, in changing the notes from last year. These are all, I think, easier than the others or the, the other dilations with the center at the origin and not at the origin. So if we're going to reflect over the y-axis, you just pick some points and then reflect them over the y-axis. So if I pick the point 3, 2, and you reflect that over the y-axis, what are the coordinates? Negative 3, 2. Yep. So plot negative 3, 2. And then, say we pick the point 0, 6, that's on the line of reflection, so does that move? No, and remember, that's called invariant. And then the last one, 6, negative 2 would be negative 6, negative 2. So draw your line, and then we just need to write the equation of that line. And with a y-intercept of 6, what's the slope of our line, if you count? From one point to the next, say I use this one and this one, it's up 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, 2, 3. So the slope of 4 thirds y-intercept of 6, no need to use the y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Just plug it into y equals mx plus b. All right, on to number two. We're going to take this line and we're going to translate. In terms of right, left, up, down, how are you going to move every point on the line? Just no, x plus 2 means you're going to go right two units, and then y minus 3 is down three units. So you take each point, so say I pick this point which is 1, 3, you're going to go right two, 1, 2, down 1, 2, 3. Take this point, right two, down 1, 2, 3. All you need is two points to graph a line or you can move more than one, and then if you count the slope between the two that you graphed, it's down one over one, two, three, which is parallel since they have the same slope. We just have the B value of one, so go up one over one, two, three, up one, one, two, three, and draw the line. So this is Y equals negative one third X plus one. One. So number three, a rotation of 270 about the origin. Well, remember you're going in order of the quadrants. So quadrant one to quadrant two to three to four. So that's counterclockwise. So you could go counterclockwise three turns or go clockwise one, which would be a negative, what, to negative 90 degrees. That would put you, just have an idea, bottom line is that would put, say we pick this point here that's in quadrant two, and when you rotate it's going to be in quadrant one. Good. But the easy points, as we just said, to rotate are these points on the axes. So take this point, rotate your paper, and zero two, zero two, under a rotation of negative 90 degrees. So actually take, flip your paper, is what point? Two zero. That y-axis falls right on the x-axis. And then let's move the other point, which is three zero. 
So what would 3, 0 become after rotation of negative 90? So it's here. It's going to rotate and land on 0, negative 3. So now this slope is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So the slope of the new line, so this went 0, negative 3, but our line has a slope of up 3 over 2. And then our B value is right here. So that is y equals 3 halves x minus 3. What's the relationship between those two lines? Perpendicular. Perpendicular because the slopes are? Yes. All right, a sequence of transformations. So if you take a look at the hexagons right here, more than one transformation was performed. And then you can look down here at the triangles. So how many transformations were performed with the hexagons? Two. Down here? Three. So it just has to be more than one. Okay? So one of them, the hexagon remained congruent. And then here the triangle is similar. So th with the hexagons, that's a sequence of congruent transformations. The figure remains congruent, where this ended up to be similar. So with a congruence transformation, that's a sequence of rigid motions. So what are, what are the rigid motions? What are some examples of those transformations? Yeah. Reflection, good. Jesse? Rotation in the last one? Transformation. Or no, transformation is a transformation. I think you meant to say translation. Yeah, those are the three. So here, we first went from one to two by translating the hexagon right and up. And then there was the rotation. Notice it said about the origin. Okay? So big thing with the rigid motion is that your distance is preserved. With similarity, what transformation has to be one of the transformations? A dilation. So similarity transformation is when a dilation follows a rigid motion as distance is not preserved. So first, it was translated. So it was just moved right. And then it was reflected over the x-axis and then dilated just by k greater than 1. Okay, we don't know what it is, but we know it got bigger. Centered at the origin. Okay, a composition. So next year in Algebra 2, you will do a composition of functions. A composition is noted by this symbol that looks like the dot for multiplication, but it's an open circle where the dot is closed. To read the composition, okay, it's in red, you do the right transformation first, and then you do what's on the left side second. So a composition is a combination of two or more transformations where the first transformation produces an image. Then the key thing is that second transformation is performed on the image, okay? So down below, we have a composition of a translation and a reflection. If you change the order, if you look at the pictures, do the triangles end up in the same spot? No. So that means it's not commutative. So there is only one composition of transformations that is commutative. But in this case, the translation right one up five and reflection over the y equals x is not commutative. Now, in other cases, there may be um, a sequence of transformations or a composition that can be just named with one. So let's say, here are the two transformations. How can you get to the first triangle to the last triangle in one transformation? So if we look at the pentagons, okay, it was first reflected over the y-axis, right? That's why a reflection over the y-axis is written on the right side, because that's the way we do that first. 
And then it took the pentagon and went reflected over the x-axis. Well, how can you, if you get rid of the middleman and just do one transformation, what would that be equivalent to, Toby? Rotate it, yes. So if you were to take your compass, and you could check this, and put it on, say, the origin, and I'll use, so I have a, even though it's pretty easy to use this, but that point, and you draw your circle, it should touch that one. So yes, a rotation of how many degrees? <coughs> 180 degrees is right. So reflection or rotation of 180, so this could also be a reflection through the point zero, zero, the origin. Now, the typo on the right side is if you take a look at this, well, first, can you identify the typo? So if you take a look at the original triangle, okay, so let's number them. The original one is which one? The one all the way to the left. And then that goes to what color? The yellow one or the blue one? Yellow. Now, according to the page, it says it was reflected over x equals 2. Is that right? No, it was reflected over x equals negative 3 first. So that should be on the right side. Because with the composition, you work right to left. And then you take this one, number 2, and you reflect it over x equals 2. Okay, to get number three. It gives you a hint on what the one transformation would be, Toby. So that's the same as a translation T ten zero. A special composition is the glide reflection. A glide reflection is a transformation in which the glide is the slide and reflection is obviously the reflection. So it's the composition in which a figure is reflected through a line, but the key thing is that it's moved along a line parallel to the line of reflection. That's a glide reflection. So at first we went from here to here, and then it was moved. This arrow right here is parallel to that line of reflection. So the vector is parallel to the line of reflection. Now, with a glide reflection, it doesn't matter the order in which you do it. It's the special one. So therefore, a glide reflection is commutative. So let's go to number four first, because now we can use transformations to show figures congruent and that figures are similar. So number four, it says, which statement is sufficient evidence to show that triangle DEF is congruent? So in narrowing it down, this, all three angles congruent, um, that shows similarity. <coughs> Okay, length AB equal to DE, so that's like side side. When you get down to the two rigid motions, this one's saying um, SSS, which does prove congruency. And the last one, like a point maps onto another point, a side maps onto a side and an angle. So it could have been congruent by side angle side, right? That's a th postulate, but we don't show congruency with one point mapping onto another point. So now let's go up to, back up to a way to show similarity. All circles are similar. Wouldn't you agree? All circles are similar to each other. Okay? To show, okay, you need to be able to explain why so you first need to determine, are you going to map one circle to the other? So which way are you mapping? It doesn't matter. And you do that by first translating. So you're going to slide the center over this center. So you have the circle. And then you dilate it. So you move it over, and then you make it bigger so that this radius, R1, goes to R2. Okay, and we'll go to that example, which is on the back. Number seven first. 
So we're going to show circle D is similar to circle C by stating the necessary transformations. So you need the center and radius of each, so go ahead and note that. Jacob, what's the center of C? Negative 3, 2. And the radius? Good. Aiden, what's the center for D? And then radius? Yeah. So which way do you want to map? You want to do circle C to circle D, circle D to circle C. So let's do, okay, so circle C is mapped to circle D. So we stated how we're moving, and we first translate it by translating circle C how. So T... Well, from this center, which goes, the x goes from a negative 3 to a positive 1. So we added how many? Okay, so it's a t4. And then the y value went from 2 to a 5. Nope, from a positive 2 to a positive 5, it'd be positive 3. So we add 4, add 3. Um, so circle C is mapped to circle D by translating circle uh, C, t4, 3, a long vector CD. So now the circles match up. C went to D. And then we're going to do what to it? To make it, we're going to dilate. A similarity um, key, one again, similar transformation involves a dilation. And then dilate circle C by scale factor of it's got to get bigger, yeah. One and two thirds, or just simply leave it improper, five thirds. So image over pre-image. Um, well, we first should also say in, um, scale factor of five thirds centered so we need to state the center of dilation centered at C. Good. So let's finish with a couple compositions. So going back to this question five, let's get rid of the compass. We're going to take point A that's negative two six. We're going to perform which transformation first? The rotation of 90 degrees. Then we're going to get that answer and then reflect that answer along the x-axis. So if you actually sketch the rotation of 90 degrees, if you're at left, 2, up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, here's A. You're going to rotate it 90 degrees, so it's going to go from quadrant 2 to 3. Can anyone tell me the image if you actually rotate your paper? This y-axis becomes the x-axis, so if you can kind of picture it, this is going to land. This part will land right here. Can anyone tell me the point after you rotate it, Jesse? Nope. If it's going in this direction, this is your y-axis or your y-axis becomes the x-axis, so you're right with the 6. Sophie, it's just not going to be positive 6, it's going to be negative 6. So you're going to be over here at negative 6, then what? Negative 2. Then you, when you reflect, so it's going to go right here, then you reflect that over the x-axis and it becomes, is that a stretch or a hand? So that becomes a negative 6, positive 2. ABC's graphed. 
Um, we're going to graph that image under a dilation of negative 2. Well, we've already done dilation, so this is easy. So what's so different about this one? It doesn't state the center, so the center is at the origin. So if we take and multiply all of our coordinates by negative 2. So it would be positive 4, negative 2 times negative 1, 2. What are the coordinates of B prime? Negative 2 times negative 2 again, 4. Negative 2 times negative 3, 6. And then negative 2 times negative 1, 2, then 6. So let's plot that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. Um, 4, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then C, 1, 2, 6. So it did get twice as large, but look where the negative dilation put it. It did what to it besides make it bigger? Yeah, so it's actually a dilation of a negative scale factor is actually a composition. So if you were to describe this as a sequence of transformations, what would you say you did first? If you had uh, the regions question said, how do we get from A prime, B prime, C prime, or I'm sorry, the original A, B, C to this one? How would you describe a sequence of transformations, Justin? Nope. If you had to describe a sequence of transformations, you have to say, reflect it over this. Uh, translate it this many units right and up or right and down. Rotate it. Well, it is in one transformation, but how would you describe it in a sequence of, say, two or more? Jesse just stated, what's one transformation it did? Rotation of how many degrees? So rotation, so we could say rotate triangle ABC um, 180 degrees about the origin, and then do what? Dilate um, by a scale factor of two about the origin. Yeah. Earlier, someone said, well, first take the triangle and reflect it so it looks like this. Reflect it over y, reflect it over x, and then dilate it. Does that work in three? Yeah. Yeah. So there's going to be more than one possible answer on the state test. Do we have any others or do we answer them all? We answer them all. We are done.